Good morning, Honors Chemistry students. I thought today I would like to go over how to calculate the molecular formula of a compound given its molecular weight and its percent composition data. So I've chosen the following problem for this purpose, which requires you to calculate the molecular formula for a compound that has a molecular weight of 180 grams and contains 40.0% carbon, 6.7% hydrogen, and 53.3% oxygen. As always, I would like you to set your problem up according to the known, unknown, solution style of problem solving. By recording all those various elements of the problem that you're given and those that you have to determine. So, in this problem, initially you're told that the percent of carbon in the compound is 40.0% carbon. And you're told that the percent of hydrogen in this compound is 6.7% hydrogen. And you're told that the percent of oxygen is 53.3% percent oxygen. You may note that all of these percentages typically add up to a hundred percent or something close to that. So therefore that gives some, us some important advantages in solving it. You're also going to need to know the gramatomic mass of each of these substances. So you're going to need to look up the gramatomic mass for carbon on the periodic table, which is 12.011 grams of carbon per mole of carbon. Likewise, you're going to need to know the gram atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1.00795 grams of hydrogen per mole of hydrogen. And you're going to need to know the gram atomic mass of oxygen which is 15.9994 grams of oxygen per mole of oxygen. So those are all important pieces that you need to know to solve this most basic problem. You're also told that the gram molecular mass of this compound that contains some ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen atoms is equal to 180 grams of that substance, although we don't know what that substance is. In the unknown, you're asked to calculate the molecular formula of this compound, which you don't know what that is, but you know it does have some given ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen atoms. So in many ways, you're going to incorporate the knowledge that you use to calculate the empirical formula of a compound. So in your solution, the solution pathway is basically this. Since you have 100% of this compound, you can assume that percent is mass. So initially, you can assume that percent can be mass, and you're going to assume that, and that you can convert mass to moles of substance using gram atomic mass. Thus, you needed to know your gram atomic masses. And then you're going to divide by the smallest amount of moles and multiply till whole to find the empirical formula, which is the simplest ratio of atoms to one another in the compound. So your first task is to determine the relative mole ratios of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. So your first task is going to be to calculate the moles 
of each of those substance, substances of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen relative to one another. So we're gonna proceed like this. We're gonna say that we're looking for moles of carbon and some unit of moles of carbon. We're gonna assume that 40% represents 40 grams. Because if you have 100% of a substance or 100 grams of it, at least 40 of those grams should be carbon. You're going to need to convert grams of carbon to moles of carbon. So whatever unit you want to get rid of, you put in the denominator. Whatever unit you want to achieve, you put in the numerator. So we're going to say that one mole of carbon possesses 12.011 grams of carbon grams of carbon cancel out, and we're going to have to calculate what that value is. So I'm going to take out my calculator here, and let's run those numbers. 40.0 divided by 12.011 gives me a value of 3.330. Well, 40.0 has three significant figures in it, because since the decimal point is present, you come from the Pacific Every digit thereafter is significant. So we need three significant digits in our measurement or in our calculation to follow the rules of significant figures, which would mean that we have 3.33 moles of carbon. We need to approach the same way for calculating the moles of hydrogen. So we're going to set out to calculate the relative number of moles of hydrogen. So we know that there are 6.7 grams of hydrogen in this compound. We know that one mole of hydrogen has a mass of 1.00795 grams of hydrogen based upon the gram atomic mass in the periodic table. Grams of hydrogen cancel out, and we're left with moles. So let's run that number, 6.7 divided by 1.00795 gives us a value of 6.647. In this case, we only have two significant figures, so therefore I'm going to drop the 4, and my answer is going to be 6.6 .6 moles of hydrogen. We need to do the same calculation to find out how many moles of oxygen we have in the compound. So we're going to set it up exactly the same way. We know that we know that based upon the information we were given, there are 53.3 grams of oxygen. We know that each mole of oxygen possesses 15.9994 grams of oxygen, grams of oxygen cancel out, and that leaves us moles. Let's go ahead and do that calculation. It's 53.3 divided by 15.9994, and we get a value of 3.33 moles of oxygen. And since we have three significant figures in our original measurement, we're going to go with 3.33 moles of oxygen. So we've assumed percent is mass. We've converted mass to moles. Now we need to divide by the smallest number of moles. So you note that both oxygen and carbon have the relative, relatively the same number of moles. So I'm just gonna go ahead and divide all three of these values by the moles of oxygen. So we're gonna divide this by 3.33 moles of oxygen. We're gonna divide the moles of hydrogen by 3.33 moles of oxygen and divide the moles of oxygen by 3.33 moles of oxygen. Well, you can see that moles cancel out, and 3.33 divided by 3.33 is essentially 
and you can see that 6.6 .6 divided by 3.3 .3 is going to be approximately 2, and for all intents and practical purposes, it is 2. And then 3.33, once again, divided by 3.33 is equal to 1. So our relative mole ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is 1 to 2 to 1. So therefore, we know approximately that we have in the empirical formula, we have one carbon atom for every two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. So we have a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. So we can simply say the empirical formula of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is going to be C1H2O1, or simply, or simply CH2O. So the next task that you have to set out, we didn't actually need to multiply to get a whole number, by the way, because our numbers came out perfectly. So the next task that we have to set out to do is to find the empirical formula mass because we need to know what the mass of the empirical formula is. So we're going to calculate the empirical formula mass or the EFM of CH2O, which is a calculation that you should be relatively familiar with because you know the empirical formula mass of C, excuse me, CH2O, pardon my little x there, is equal to some value in grams of CH2O. So we know that in our empirical formula, we have one mole of carbon and each mole of carbon possesses 12.011 grams of carbon. Moles of carbon cancel, which leaves us grams of carbon. We know we have two moles of hydrogen, and we know each mole of hydrogen has a mass of 1.00795 grams of hydrogen per one mole of hydrogen. Moles of hydrogen cancel, leaving us grams of hydrogen. And we know at long last there's one mole of oxygen in our empirical formula. And we know that each mole of oxygen has a mass of 15.994 grams of oxygen per mole of oxygen. Moles of oxygen cancel. And so we have to sum all these values up. Uh, by my calculations, I'm going to try to put this in a convenient place here. We have 12.011 grams of carbon plus 2 moles times 1.00795 grams of hydrogen plus 15.9994 grams of oxygen which gives us a value of 30.0263. The fewest decimal places we have is for carbon, which has three. So we're going to limit our answer to three decimal places. So it would be 30.026 grams of CH2O. So that's our empirical formula mass that goes along with the empirical formula of CH2O, which is the simplest ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. So the next step is to determine what factor you need to multiply this empirical formula by to arrive at the actual molecular formula. So the third task that we have, and I'm going to have to try to conserve space here, the third task that we have is to calculate 
the ratio between the gram molecular mass and the empirical formula mass. That's what we're interested in. So as we move this along here, we know that we're looking for the ratio between the gram molecular mass and the empirical formula mass. And we don't know what that ratio is going to look like, but we do know that we were given a gram molecular mass of 180 grams. 180 grams of CXHYOZ. And we're going to divide that by our empirical formula mass, which is 30.026 grams of CH2O. And it looks like when we run those numbers, let's do that division operation. You have 180 divided by 30.026, and you get a value of 5.99. So that ratio is right around six. So our ratio here is 5.99. So we're gonna say that that's approximately a multiplication factor by six. So to save space here, I'm gonna put my last calculation here. The fourth thing you need to do is to calculate the molecular, molecular formula of CXHYOZ. And essentially, to calculate the molecular formula, you don't know what that is or what that's going to look like, but you're going to multiply 6 times CH2O, and when you do that, you get C6H12O6, which turns out is your molecular formula, and that should be a compound that looks familiar to you because that should be the same as that for a molecule of glucose. So in closing, molecular formula problems can be a little bit longer, but they're not all that difficult. They're fairly straightforward because when you recognize percent composition data is converted to mass, mass to moles, you find you divide by the smallest number of moles to find a simple whole number ratio. Once you have that whole number relative ratio of moles in the compound to one another, you can write the empirical formula which you can use to calculate the empirical formula mass. Once you have that, you compare your empirical formula mass to the molecular, gram molecular mass to come up with a whole number to multiply your empirical formula by to find your molecular formula, which in this case is glucose. And with that, that's how you solve molecular formula problems.